After this tutorial is over, you'll be able to put the bombing of the sacred timeline on any screen in any place. Somebody just bombed the sacred timeline. And before we hop into After Effects, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Let's begin. First, we're gonna create the grid background. You go up to your pin tool and create a straight line by holding shift click. And over in the shape properties window on the right, let's change the stroke to really, really tiny. And under contents, you see this little button that says add. If you just add this effect right here called a repeater, you can increase the copies under here in the layers panel. And under transform repeater, if we bring down the position, you can see all these grid lines start to come down. And we'll also use the position uh, option to just move them over to the left. And that is how you create an easy grid in After Effects. And to keep this quaint and faint, we'll turn the opacity down really low. And to give it some cool digitally textury look, we're gonna pre-compose it and type in grid background. Hit T and alt click on opacity and type in wiggle 12 comma 20. And now it's really small, but you've got some flickering background lines. And now we'll create the sacred timeline. This one's the easiest. You just come up here, grab a rectangle and just drag it across the screen. Let's change the fill color to white. And I'll change the size to make this line a bit smaller. You can repeat that process to create the thin red lines at the very top of the display. And in the show, they start blinking when the sacred top line, oh my God, the timeline breaks. And an easy way to make something blink is hold keyframes on the opacity. So I'll take these two shape layers I created and pre-compose them and name them red lines. And we'll hit T and create a keyframe for 100 and go over like four frames and then type in zero. If we right click on these keyframes and go to toggle hold keyframe, now it will just blink. It won't ease into the next numerical value, it just hard cuts to it. And so you can just keep copying and pasting these keyframes until you have enough to create a sequence for this to blink a lot. And so now when the timeline inevitably explodes, you have this nice blinking uh, set of red lines. If you want the blinking to happen faster or slower, you can just select all of the lines, hold Alt, click the last keyframe and drag them closer to each other. If we look at the reference image at the bottom, there's like a long orange line with a rising counter. I'm gonna show you how to animate the counter going up. This one's an easy task. Let's grab the rectangle tool and create a tiny little thin orange line. I'm gonna pre-compose this and name it orange counter line. So I can grab the rectangle tool and create a mask right here and subtract it. If we hit T up at the top, we can just type in any number we want. I'll type in 10. In effects and presets, if you type in slider, you'll see an effect called slider control and just br bring that onto your uh, text. If we drop down our text in the layers panel um, and swirl down text, you can drag this pick whip to the slider. And so when you crank up the slider, it makes the counter go up. So you can keyframe this at 10 and then have it go to 99. You'll see that there's a million decibels, which is annoying, but all you have to do is alt click on your slider and you see how there's already this expression there. But if you do math dot round parentheses and then the expression you already made by pick whipping this to the slider control, you get rid of the rounded numbers. And then with the text tool, I'll just create a percent sign and bam, we've got a little orange counter slider at the bottom. Next is the scrolling text that goes left and then the bottom text goes right. You wanna basically type out enough to where it's so long that it goes past your composition, create a position keyframe, and then over the span of your composition, just have it pan left to right. It's giving airport um, display. Same deal. And so we will animate this to go right to left, create a position keyframe when it's far past the frame like this. And then by the end of your composition, have it scrolling all the way to the left. And bam, we've created the gorgeous outline of the TVA UI. Here's a little trick though I use to make text look more digitally and old school. In the effects and presets, if you type in fluorescent, you'll see that under lights and optical and the text effects, you can bring fluorescent light onto your texts. You'll see now that it's like blinking. I do think this is too much blinking. So what we wanna do is under the animator that's now inside of your text layer, when you drop it down, you'll see that there's an opacity option. We'll just bring this up to like 70%. And what that means is it can't drop below 
80%. So if you have the opacity at like 14%, it's going all the way down to 14% and then back up to 100. To keep the blink subtle, we will leave it at 50. And we'll just put fluorescent light on all of the text. And now to bomb the sacred timeline. I'm gonna solo the main sacred timeline. And I'm gonna go up to my pin tool and I'm gonna create a shape that matches the reference image of the Loki timeline. Let's turn off the, the fill and change the stroke to white. Let's make the stroke a little thick. And when we wanna re-fix the mask, we have to drop the layer down and under shape one, click on path. So we're gonna make this nice little branch just like so. And the effect I use to make them actually branch out is over here under contents on this add button, we wanna grab trim paths. If we drop that down, you can crank up the end uh, slider here to have it grow out of this main line. So we'll create a keyframe at 100 and a few seconds to the left, we'll drag it down to zero. And so bam, we have our branch timeline growing out. To make it branch into like two different timelines on the same shape layer, make sure you're selected on the same shape layer. Grab the pin tool and we'll create a mask a little outside, but then drag it inside the other one and we'll create a branch like this. And now it looks weird because the trim paths is like affecting both at the same time. But what we have to do, and this is super important, is go back to our add button and put another trim paths in there and make sure it's under shape two and above shape one. What we're gonna do is at the moment that this first branch starts crossing it under trim paths, we'll keyframe the end and bring it to zero. And then over the span of a few seconds, we'll keyframe it 100%. And so as the first branch comes, the other one sprouts out of it. Yeah, and then the next part, there's no avoiding it. You just have to do that like a million times. And after you've done that a million times, you now have a sacred timeline that has tons of branches. We're gonna pre-compose all of these lines. Pre-compose them and name them branches. And because these are pre-composed, we can actually maybe make them smaller and then duplicate our branches layer and just drag them over to the left and make them smaller, duplicate that, bring them down over here to the right, and bam, you have like the most gorgeous looking TVA AI ever. UI, I meant UI. Now let's grab all of our branches that we've now created and pre-compose those. And we're just gonna name it branches again. In the show, as these start to branch out, they start turning orange. To recreate that look, we're gonna go up to effects and presets and type in fill. Click that onto your lines. And when they've all branched out, let's create a keyframe and make them that orange. Kind of like a fiery orange. And then if we go to the very beginning, we'll just set a keyframe to white. So they start coming out as white and slowly turn orange. Now, if we export everything we've just made, we'll have this gorgeous screen we can put anywhere. And now I'm gonna show you all the ways you can composite this into a television. So let me put this here display into this TV right here. We're gonna duplicate the layer and we're gonna cut out the computer screen. And then once it's cut out, hit subtract. This looks good. And then we're actually gonna duplicate this cutout, hit M to drop down our mask, and hit add so the screen is back on top. But what we're gonna do, and this is the magical part, we're gonna set it to screen. So now our TV screen is in front of everything. You can lower the opacity on the screen you've added to kind of make it how you'd like. And then if we go up to our effects and presets and type glow, we'll drop that on everything and we'll crank up the radius. And if we type in noise and throw that in there, you can start to see the magic there happening. You could even, if you're feeling brave, type in posterize time and make the animation go at like 13 frames a second, which gives it this really cool old school stop motion-y animation look. And let's say you have a bubble TV, like a lot of the ones in the TVA. And for instance, this TV right here, you can see it's got this like weird circular thing. So what we're gonna do is on our clip, we type in the effect optics compensation. If we crank that up, you can see how it's now going inwards of itself. <laughs> what we can do is change the view center of this. You can see, look, we're basically recreating the bubble TV look um, by moving around this horizontal center. Hit S to scale it up now. And with optics compensation, just find where it matches your television. And so now it'll have that beautiful curved look. And bam, I think that's it. Look at that. <laughs> I gotta say, look, I'm a huge Loki fan. I have every Marvel prop that exists. And it feels like my duty as a professional visual effects artist to make stuff like this. Like I feel so powerful that I can just make the same 
Undertaker timeline from Loki. And if you don't want to go through all of this work, I'll put a free link to my After Effects file in the description. Just send me whatever you use it in. I want to contribute to my fellow nerds' videos. You could say that basically Squarespace bought you this free graphic because they sponsor this video. From online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Let's say you want to run a successful business, you have to sign up for Squarespace. They allow you to make an online store. So if you have a product, you can sell it there. If you make tables, like epoxy resin, those pretty ones, put it on Squarespace. They make it incredibly easy too because they're award-winning designer templates. I mean, these are gorgeous. Look at these bags. Look at these jewelry. It's presented so professionally, I, I kind of want to buy it. Which leads me to my next amazing point about Squarespace. They do custom merch. They'll even ship it for you and handle the inventory. So if you ever wanted to create a connection with your audience by making physical products, you have to do it with Squarespace. And it's all custom merch, so from the design process to shipping and handling, they can handle all of it. And lastly, if you're a content creator and you want to maybe monetize on some extra bonus content, well Squarespace has member-only areas. You can put your exclusive bonus content that won't be shared on any of your public profiles in the members areas, so you can start monetizing your audience for them to come pay to see your bonus content. Your fans will love it, they'll get extra stuff, you'll get extra spending money, and I'll be really happy for you. <laughs> so if all this sounds amazing, which it is, go to squarespace.com slash willcarmack to get 10% off your first website or domain. I really hope you like this tutorial, and where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.